Good morning. A week ago, Linnell and I took a two-day retreat driving up to northern Michigan. This is a place that's beloved by both of our families. On Saturday afternoon, we drove up Old Mission Peninsula all the way up to Mission Point Lighthouse. The peninsula divides the east and the west arms of the Grand Traverse Bay. You'll see a picture of us there on the 45th parallel. That's the halfway point between the equator and the North Pole. While we were there, you can look out upon the vast expanse of the bay and Lake Michigan in the distance. You can look upon beautiful, colorful forests, and you can see acres upon acres of vineyards. And, and then you look at that dramatic Michigan sky out over the lake. It is remarkable and beautiful to see. Well, as we thought about these things, the word that comes to mind is the word gratitude. We feel gratitude for God's beautiful creation. We feel gratitude for God's love and grace and mercy and forgiveness. We feel gratitude for the people who have walked along the way in our journey. And as we think about that, that grateful heart, we also realize that there are times in our lives that are anxious. We are in the midst of anxious times right now. That's true for us personally, and it's true for us in a, in a greater uh, way as well as we look upon others who are struggling in this time. It is a time when we feel distressed, unsettled, weary, not sure what's going to come next. In moments like this, it's a good thing to find time apart somewhere special for you, a place of retreat where you can rest and reflect and pray and study, and study scripture. For Linnell and for me over these two days of retreat, we had a chance to read scripture and it came to life as we considered and thought about and prayed about and read the Sermon on the Mount. Think about it with me in these ways. That sermon begins with those incredible, incredible words, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed, what a beautiful word. Poor in spirit, well, that's how we may be feeling. And the kingdom of heaven, what a picture of what God intends for you and for me. Well, at the end of the sermon on the Mount, at the other end in chapter seven of Matthew, we have these words where Jesus says, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them in action is like the wise man who built his house on the rock. The winds came, the waves rose, the rain beat against that house, but it did not fall because it was founded on the rock. Well, for Linnell and me, on Christ the solid rock I stand is a theme verse, a theme hymn. We feel that our foundation is secure if we are built upon the rock. But it says that everyone who does these words of mine, they're the ones who build their, their house on the rock. Jesus goes on and says, by their fruit, you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Well, that is a through line that goes throughout the Sermon on the Mount that will be known by our fruit, that we are a people who do the will of God, that we, if we hear the word of God, we need to put it into action. I think of uh, these words that, um, that come from Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. He says that you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. He says, don't let that light be hidden, let it shine. And here's how he says it. Uh, let your light so shine before others that they see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. I love that. And it's, re it's reflected in the words of Amy Jill Levine as she teaches in her book, The Sermon on the Mount. Here's what Amy Jill Levine says. Any faith that does not manifest itself in works is not faith. It's complacency and self-satisfaction. She goes on and she says this. If a disciple does not bear good fruit, then the system does not work. And then she goes on and says this. We are on our way, but we can always do better. Well, that for me is almost like a mantra. I do feel like we are on our way. I do feel personally like I'm on my way, but I know in my heart and in my mind and in my soul that I can do better. And by God's grace, I can do better. 
there's that passage in the Gospel of Mark chapter 9 verse 23 where there's a, a man who asks for Jesus to heal his son. He says, if you are able, you can heal my son. And Jesus says, if you are able, all things are possible through God for those who believe. And I'm reminded of that uh, as I keep seeking to do what would be described as the better thing, the better way. Reggie McNeil wrote Kingdom Come, and it's a great companion book to Sermon on the Mount. And here's what he says about just the goodness of creation and the goodness of God's kingdom being made known. He says this, describing life as God intends it to be. He says, whenever and wherever God's character and will are displayed, the kingdom is made evident. Goodness is an outcropping of God's kingdom as his faithfulness, mercy, compassion, love, justice, righteousness, and sanctity. On the flip side, he goes on and he says that sin, on the other hand, is everything that diminishes life. And we could you know, go on uh, a long time about those things that diminish and belittle and devalue uh, life and people. That's sin, and we need to recognize it. Well, Jesus teaches in the Sermon on the Mount about the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do to you. And he says, this is the law and the prophets. That's the golden rule. Well, Amy Jill Levine teaches about the silver rule. She tells the story about Rabbi Hillel. There's a Gentile who comes to Rabbi Hillel and says, um, you can convert me if you can say the entire Torah standing on one foot. And uh, so here's what the rabbi said. That which is hateful, do not do to another. That is the entire Torah. And the rest is its interpretation. Go study. Well, that could be called the silver rule to go along with our golden rule, perhaps. But the sense is this, that how we live out our lives as part of God's kingdom being made known on earth, as it one day will be made known and completed uh, in the time to come, that as we live that out, that we are a light to the world, that we are to let our good works show, that wherever we go, we are meant to be a blessing, not just blessed ourselves, but to be a blessing to others. That is all the law and the prophets, as Jesus teaches later in the Gospel of Matthew. When a teacher asks him what is the greatest commandment of the law, here's what Jesus said, and this is probably memorized by you, and I have it memorized as well, but I want to get it exactly right. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Well, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And together we are to make God's light known, shown in our good works, the ways we represent the kingdom of God on earth. So we conclude by remembering that um, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is our prayer. And so when we feel anxious and weary and restless and unsettled and, and have lost our way, it takes time to pull aside, to rest, to pray, to read scripture, and to allow it to come alive as you're inspired once again to be a follower of Jesus, a light of the world. Praise God. Amen.